right, Melanie, Serena. Hey, congratulations for a hot mess holiday. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it's a it's a hilarious uh, laugh out loud comedy, and uh, I mean it's very fortunate that uh, it will be on Comedy Central pretty pretty soon, which is which is terrific. Yeah. It's crazy. Crank can't believe it. Like. I think, Mel, do you have like just butterflies like increasing in your stomach as each day? It's like a countdown, like the craziest countdown ever in my life. Yeah, I, it's like one of those things my husband was saying the other day because I was like, oh my gosh, this is so much work and, and there's there's so much stress involved in getting this through to the finish line. He's like, don't worry, it'll be over in you know two weeks. At the same time, I was like, no, I'm embracing every day. Like, I love this. Like, I don't want it to be done. This is, this is our baby. Like, you only give birth to a baby, baby once, <laughs> and this is like our, our debut and our coming out. So it's, it's really, really exciting and it is coming up very quickly. So you caught us at a good time. Um, <laughs> point, point, point of correction, uh, a lot of people have multiple babies, but uh, hopefully you'll have <laughs> multiple babies after this. So is your first baby. This baby, first this baby. first seven-year-old baby, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We love all our babies equally. We're not like our parents. <laughs> so was, um, were, well, for both of you, were you, were, for, for the story, was it, were you, both of you were there from the start? Because from my understand, Samir wrote it based on your, your friendship. Is that, is that how it worked? Yeah, so uh, I was working in development in 2014. Uh, in LA. And I wanted to, and Mel and I were doing sketches at that time, YouTube sketches, two brown girls. And yeah. so, so we'd already been friends for a couple years. And then a few years into our friendship, we decided to write and produce and put online these comedy sketches based on our own personas. And then we want, we always wanted to like expand and we were like, you know, it'd be so nice to do something bigger, maybe a show, maybe a film. And so while I was working in development at that place, my, my executive producer, um, I told him like, I wanted, we want to do like a Brown ensemble feature film cast feature film comedy with, with, with us and our friends. So that was the original idea. And then he's like, we'll find a writer, figure it out, start developing it. So I was like, ah. so then I reached out to my contacts. Samir came across their mutual friend. I sent him our sketches and then he was like, yes, let's keep talking about the feature film idea. But also, can I write a pilot for, for you and Melanie? I love this odd couple dynamic. And I've been looking for a duo like this. So we were like, hell yeah. So then we started all developing it together. And then the, the ensemble Brown feature film cast comedy got put on the side because we always focused on this being like, let's make it a web series. Let's make it a TV show. And now turn around to seven years later, we're releasing a Brown ensemble comedy feature film with us and all of our friends. It's freaking crazy. The universe is crazy. <laughs> well, that's actually pretty awesome. So mm -hmm. your, your, your two friendships have been going on for a long time. Is this uh, na naturally you, you two are very comedic because, uh, because I, I think I've seen both of you in more serious roles in the past. That's yeah, that's true. Um, I have both of us started, I think, with with comedy, right? But at the same time, we've all done dramatic roles. And I think what's great about us when we're together is that comedy just comes out. So when I met Serena for the first time, it was actually at a mutual friend stand up comedy show. And I was gravitating towards her because she had these like amazing bangs. And I'd never seen an Indian girl with still bangs. do. Still do. And I actually, after the shoot, I, I failed, but I tried to replicate Serena. You didn't, but it looked great. And so I was talking to this girl and I kept laughing after everything that she said. And then it turns out that Serena. Literally everything. Yeah. Yeah. Like literally after everything she said. And then Serena told me later that she really liked me because I laughed after everything she said. <laughs> so we were just like a match made in heaven. And um, when we would go out in public, we would have all these stories about like men hitting on us. And we would tell those to other people and they would just be like, you guys have such a great dynamic. You should write something together. So then we got together one weekend 
and like busted up like 20 pages of material without like overthinking it. And we were just having fun, like making each other laugh. And then we like, yeah. And then we put it together and put it out there and people really enjoyed it. So we knew we had something, but I think ultimately we just wanted to have fun, you know? That's a, that's, a, that's great natural chemistry between you two. I mean, I guess <laughs> it's been many, many years in the, in the breaking, uh, in the making it's, itself. So, uh, so for a hot mess holiday, how did you land on uh, Diwali as a, you know, as, as your, as the holiday for, for, for this film? I know, I know my, my, uh, I have business partners and they, they all, they all celebrate, but you know, I, I never participated in it. So for, for some, some of us who are not Southern Asian, we have no idea what this is. <laughs> that's why, man. Yeah, that's why we got to bring it to the people. Like it was, so Viacom came back to us and said, uh, we would love to, to make this into a holiday movie. Which holiday would you like to do? No question. Right away, the whole creative team was like, it has to be the Bali. It's got to be the Bali. Like there hasn't been one. People don't know about it. It's really crazy that people don't know about it. Uh, and it's like, the project is unique in and of itself already, given all the first associated with it. Uh, and so it's so cool to tack on another one to have it be, I don't know. What do you think, Mel? Like just to have it be, it wasn't so much about the, like representation for representation's sake. Like it wasn't like, go, let's go. You know, it was just like, it was just like, it's, it'd be so cool to see a Diwali movie. Like, I wish I had that growing up. Yeah. Like, I wish I had a, a banger Diwali movie to, to, to point to, or like to talk about at Indian parties or whatever, you know? So it was just, it was just something cool to give as a point of reference for our community and then all outside of that. So people to freaking know what the volley is and like to have a white guy mansplain it in the movie for everyone is freaking genius. That's freaking amazing. <laughs> now tell, tell us about the, uh, a lot of the jokes uh, in, in this film, because uh, you know, people have certain perceptions about, you know, Southern Asians as a little bit more conservative or, you know, acting away. I, we, we all know about, you know, rumor mongering aunties and uncles, you know, all, all that kind of stuff. But you also, how can you say, you also want to break down that conventional wisdom, you know, of, of what people perceive Southern Asians as. And, the, and the, I think that's what this movie actually did because, you know, not, not all Southern Asians are the same. Right. Um... So we definitely wanted to create characters we haven't seen before, and we didn't want to lean into any sort of tropes or stereotypes that American audiences are used to seeing. If anything, we wanted to defy that because as actresses, when we read scripts, when we're auditioning, it's the same sort of storyline over and over and over. I mean, things have definitely changed, of course, over the last few years, but I remember it was maybe three or four or five pilot seasons ago, and, you know, networks were providing storylines for Indian American characters, but all of those storylines revolved around getting arranged marriage or becoming a doctor, you know, these parents putting so much pressure on their kids. And we were, we were talking amongst ourselves, that's not our day-to-day -day struggle. Like we are, yes, we identify with our culture, but we're also fully American and our day-to-day -day problems are, you know, men and work and, you know, friendships and all of that. So we wanted to make, through all of our work, we wanted to make the storytelling very authentic and not try to please a general public by thinking, okay, well, this is what they're interested in. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I, yeah, I, I just saw somebody. I wasn't making sense. I just saw somebody in here. I was like, okay. what did I say? <laughs> so I'm like, Mel, what are you talking about? No, no I just saw somebody in here. <laughs> I'm like, text me that. <laughs> like you're on video. <laughs> i sorry. Sorry, sorry. Ignore okay. me, ignore me, ignore me. Go I'm on. I'm just going to do that when you start talking. Yeah, do it, do it. <laughs> just ask someone I knew. Yeah. So where was I? Um, but <laughs> was not, that's not our experience. That's not our experience. Um, but we wanted to put our experience on, on TV to screen because I think when we are honest, I feel like people are more... Um, find it easier to relate to that if that makes sense because they're not trying to be broad we're just being we're just being us and like 
everyone um, has that friend or there's that's like this or like that. And so we just, this is a story about authentic female friendship and like what you see is what you get. Like this, this is it. It was based on, it's based on a real life friendship. So um, that's what we're bringing to the screen. And I actually want to piggyback off of that and say that if Hollywood were to continue to put this tropey type of content out there, that is what people are going to categorize us as over and over and over. And it's just like self-fulfilling cycle. And so what happens is, is that divide becomes further and further for people to like further put you in that box, people to further think that you are this type of person. And then, and then we don't come together, like I just, as a community, as a whole. And, and it's frustrating because Hollywood does have such a pull, such an influence on the zeitgeist, on our culture, on, on, on the way that we perceive our outside world. And so when you are given the opportunity to, to peek behind the curtain of a certain type, of a certain culture's uh, way of being, that, that's the perception that you keep in your head. Now, if Hollywood is going to constantly make it look the same way over and over and over again, people are just going to associate that with us over and over and over again. So, and then for us, it's frustrating because we're like, we're not that. So we want to just show like the real human aspect side of who we are as Indian American females. And then there's more, as Mel was saying, there's more relatability to that because they just see us as like whole humans rather than like, oh yeah, okay. You know, to what your point was, Geek, about like South Asians are viewed as conservative. Well, why is that? I, I lived in Bombay twice over the course of 10 years, nine months each. People in Bombay get crunk as hell. Like they are like <laughs> off next level, like Ibiza. It might as well be Ibiza. And like, you never see that. So, so, and then my Indian American friends in college, fucking nuts, AWOL. You know, but so, but if we don't see that, then that stereotype is going to continue to exist. And we don't want to keep perpetuating that. Anyway, that's my soapbox speech. <laughs> you know what? I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with you because, uh, because to, later tonight I have, I have a Christmas party with my, uh, my Indian business partners and we have to bring a lot of the liquor and, and all this. I don't usually hang out because I don't usually drink what, drink a, as much as as they do but um but they're they're definitely partiers and that's a that's a whole <laughs> whole lot different world but anyways um in in the, in the in the case do you find um that the industry is changing um for the better um for uh, southern asians or do you still have to create more opportunities for you like like a film like this I'll let, I'll let Serena take that question. <laughs> this is so funny. This question in particular is what our radical honesty conversation was about. This is so funny. I love it. <laughs> so, uh, okay. So we find that over the years, it has gotten better. However, is my, ooh, is my internet not working well? Oh, you're good. You're good. Y'all can hear me? Yeah. And you, okay, because I can't hear y'all, but I'll just yeah. <laughs> Okay. So, um, so yeah, we found that over the years, it's, it's, it's been a, a, a trickling effect, you know, like more roles are coming in. As Mel said, they still have that, those underlying themes of all the trophy things. Um, but now with, with digital, there's, we do find that our crew of these South Asian actresses and actors that we came up with over the last 10, 11 years, they're like so many more people are working and that's great. And there are so many roles that aren't like the Priyas and the Pujas and, and they, they just get to be names and people that exist in the melting pot that is the US, which is great. However, we do feel like there is yet to, we have yet to reach a tipping point to where it is just so normal. And if there's a time where I don't point to the screen and go, oh my God, Indian on TV. You know, like if once I get to that place and it's not this anomaly to see a friend in a major role or see a few friends in a major role, uh, that is where we want to be because that that is the experience of being in America. Like we don't I feel like the the trend for diversity goes like uh, it's like, it, you know, it was like it was a very like white and then black people were able to come in and then Latin people were able able to come in and then Asians were able to come in and now Indians and South Asians are able to come in. 
So <clears throat> there's this like, there's this like process for diversity, which is so funny. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we still need it to be at a place where it's just completely, completely normalized. We want to homogenize diversity. That's our goal. <laughs> homogenize diversity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's actually, actually an, an interesting way to uh, to actually put it. That that's or or <laughs> homogenized diversity, diversity is is a certain term that I have I have not heard before. But I uh, have I'm never. Like, heard it. I'm, I'm just like making processing. sure that that makes sense. I don't think it does, but in my head, it totally does. I think it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, uh, now, tell us about bringing a, a lot of your friends uh, in, into a film like this. I mean, this is this must have been a really terrific uh, process and production that you actually accomplished um, for for yourselves. Gosh, we're still pinching ourselves with the incredible cast that we were able to get in this movie. You know, the the process, this movie, the production of the whole thing from start to finish was completely accelerated, right? So we were doing pre-production and then it was time for casting and we only had like a few weeks to do the whole casting process. Um, and we had our dream list of, you know, actors for each role. Some of them were available, some were not, some we found through the casting process. But I remember walking onto set the first day and seeing everybody's photo on the trailer you know, you see like so and so and their name or their character name under their headshot. And I was like, oh my God, I want to see this movie. Like, who, you know, who are these people? Like, how are all these people in one movie? And we would greet these actors and we would say, like, thank you so much for being a part of this movie. Like, you're making our dreams come true here. And we're such big fans. And everyone from like, I mean, Poonam, Ritesh, Chris Greer, Gear, Chris Parnell, um, Titus, Burtis even, they said, no, thank you. This is such a funny script. And like, this has never been done before. Thank you, you to you guys for bringing this together. And it was just surreal. Like, I, I don't know about Serena, but like, I got very emotional, like sitting in the trailer and being around these people who now we call colleagues, but at the time we were just like fanning over everybody's work and to see it a character on paper translate to a real living human through these people it was just like mind-blowing we were like we had all these moments on set when we were pinching ourselves like oh my god i can't believe this is happening i can't believe like chris parnell is here i can't believe we're doing the scene with cal penn like this is just it's unreal so we were so grateful but i mean most importantly we're really pleased with the outcome because like, I, I can't imagine any other actor in these roles having seen them because they're they're really fantastic improv actors, too. A lot of the jokes that people improv, uh, especially Poonam Patel, who crushes it as Sheila in this movie, a lot of her, a lot of her lines are, um, her ad libs are, like, some of the most laugh out loud moments in the film, just, like, improvised like crazy. So we got, we got really, really lucky, I have to say. Is that typically uh, your your styles is uh, more of improv? We, yeah, we started, our sketches and stuff were started with improv and we, we banter off each other um, a lot. I trained in improv. I was in improv and sketch group for five years and started at UCB and Groundlings. Mel has a, a sketch and improv background as well. So like that's our, our jam and that's like the crux of where our chemistry comes from. Um, and then what's really cool too, in terms of the cast, it was that like a lot of these people have been also our friends for many, many years. Like Rebby Patel, we went to college together. We're both from North Carolina. And he was the first person that I spoke to when I moved to LA about acting. I was like, I think I want to be an actor. He was the first person. And he gave me the advice to go into an improv class. And now 10 years later, I'm his fucking boss. You know? So like it was, it was really cool. Chris, Chris Gear, I'd known him for seven years. Kunal Dudeker, we were we were in that sketch comedy group together 10 years ago. So like it, it's insane to have people that you you've just been ha longevity had this longevity with over the years and being like we're coming together to do something really cool so that was yeah amazing that is that is that is great i i, I love i love this the, you know bringing in friends and developing friendships over the years um but uh for 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 cal penn which is a, which is a great surprise in in your film 
and the jokes about uh, Cal Penn, and I'm, and I, I don't know why I'm still calling him Cal Penn when you guys keep, keep on trying to correct people to call him Cal. Um, <laughs> was that was was that was that a, like a real life joke in in its own way somehow put into uh, into the film? Because because you know it's funny is because the rest rest of us we do actually call him as Cal Penn. No no one ever calls him as Cal or or some people just call him as Kumar. Yeah. <laughs> That's when yeah. you know you get a good stage name when people just say the whole thing, right? It's totally. just so memorable. So Cal, um, he he saw this proof of concept a short film that we had produced a few years back when we were trying to sell this whole idea, um, and he was like, um, "Why is this not a TV show? Like, can I come on board as an executive producer?" And uh, so we spoke to him, and we're like, um, "Yeah, of course." And then we're like, can you play a character in it? And he's like, dude, I'm down. And so we pitched this idea of him playing a heightened version of himself. And then we just developed this whole idea where he's like this stage that is always there whenever the girls are in a bind. Like he could be, you know, cutting the ribbon on a new park and the girls are like, oh, Cal, we need some advice. And he's like, guys, I have to, you know, I have to, I have to deal with this. He'd be like launching a rocket at NASA and we're like, Cal, Pan, we need some Cal advice. Cal, our outfits. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like all these ideas. But um art actually art imitates life because uh Ooh. when we were developing this together, Serena and I would just be so confused about this process and or we'd just be going through some you know, facing so many obstacles and we just didn't know what to do. And he would be like, I don't know, campaigning for Obama or something, and he'd be like, Sorry, Obama, hold on one second, I gotta take this call. Um, not really, but it was like to that extent. And he's like writing 10 books and has 10 TV shows in development. But he's like, sure, what do you girls need right now? And he always had our back and was so generous with his time. But um, it's one it's one of my favorite elements of the movie, like him playing this heightened version of himself. And in real life, we we do only call him Cal Penn. Like, yeah. Now we're just like, thanks, Cal Penn, all the time. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and one more thing before I let, let you two ladies go is, how in the world did you find a rickshaw in New York? I mean, <laughs> Dude, that was such a thing. That was such a thing. Like that is, I can't even. Okay, it was in Chicago. We 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 shot the film in Chicago, and it was such an X factor. Like we wanted it so bad, and we were when we were so tight on budget. Um, so everything was like so meticulous about what, what, what we could actually do and not do. We, we like juggled, moved stuff around just so we could like figure out how to get this rickshaw. Everyone went through hell trying to find this thing. And long story short, what ended up happening was our director, Joffer, his girlfriend, he ended up sort of just passively telling her what we were going through. And she is a freaking genius with research. She, he, she was, she's like, oh, you need a rickshaw in Chicago? Oh, okay, got it. Do, 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 10 minutes later, she found one. This is after like hell, that like hell that we, we've gone through, like everyone involved. We are like reaching out to our network, like production, everyone's going crazy trying to find a rickshaw. She finds one. And it was this, I don't remember all the details of the story. So Mel, help me fill it in. Oh, Serena, you froze. She froze, but I, she was, she was trying to throw it to you too. Uh, <laughs> Wait, you froze. Oh God. Okay. 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 Sorry. And I probably look so crazy. So this guy ordered a rickshaw from Africa for his, um, for wedding, for events, for people to rent for South Asian weddings. And it, it came in like that week or something. It came in like literally that week and it wasn't usable or something. Like he wasn't actually able to drive it. So he was like more than happy to rent it. And it was like, it ended up being really cheap. All the other options, we would have had to like fly it in from LA or whatever. And it would have been tens of thousands of dollars. And we were going to die if we weren't able to have a rickshaw in our movie. And then we, we got it like a couple days before we needed it. It was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that is a terrific story. Well, ladies, hey, Melanie, um, Serena, thank you very much for talking to us about a uh, hot mess uh, holiday. Once again, congratulations, Camp. Can't wait for the rest of the world to see it on Comedy Central. And hopefully we get to do this again on the next baby that uh, probably Yes. Yes. We are always pregnant. <laughs> well,
people. That's in this business. That's what you want to be. But anyways, <laughs> thank you very much. Appreciate it. Hopefully next time. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank, thank you. you.